You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to My Strategy with author and personal growth coach John M. Hawkins. John will provide coaching and inspiration, motivation and advice on your personal development in order to help you with the best decision making possible. So now please welcome the host of My Strategy, John M. Hawkins. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. Our episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Today, we're going to be talking about the art of providing feedback. I'm going to talk a little bit about giving and receiving feedback, various types of feedback, when to give feedback, and other tips and tricks. Well, again, happy to be here. Saturday is a great day uh, to reflect specifically for me. Uh, It's a good day of the week. Uh, I just have a little bit of time to sit back and think about what are the things that I'm working on. And in sharing those strategies with you, hopefully it can help you with your own planning. Our show is growing. We're now available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and also soon to come other platforms. So you can find past episodes there. Uh, You can find me at Hawkins John on Twitter. Or you can go to johnmhawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. And this week, I'm looking for stories on feedback. Have you have any tips on how to give feedback or have you been given bad feedback? Would love to get your examples. You can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Now, weekly, we do have uh, prizes to give away to the top submissions. Uh, You'll receive a copy of my latest book, Coach to Greatness, and you're also going to be getting a $25 Visa gift card. Well, feedback. Um, Feedback, I think, from my perspective, you know, really is something that um, is, can be a bit subjective, And so in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the definitions of feedback. I'm going to give you some varying types of feedback. We're going to talk a little bit about the psychology behind better workplace feedback. And I'm really excited to get into this. This is our second segment where I found a number of different facts about feedback. For example, 65% of employees want more feedback and struggling employees already realize they have a problem. So some good tips there. Um, excited about that. We're also going to talk about how to deliver good and bad feedback, uh, the purpose of feedback, effective feedback, job feedback, and behavioral feedback. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about constructive feedback and what you should do if you are going to be giving feedback. And also this applies to those who are receiving feedback, such as being vulnerable, lead with intent, focus on the behavior. We'll then also talk about some strategies and give you a feedback formula that you can use. It's basically in two minutes or less, you can um, ask, uh, give feedback to anyone. It's a pretty interesting little formula to use, but at least it's something that uh, you can lean on if you're ever in a position where you do need to give feedback. And I think feedback is so important for all of us, and this doesn't just relate to the job situation. This relates to every day. And I think that, you know, when we become better at receiving and also giving feedback, that really improves our communication. And so that is something that uh, I think is invaluable to all of us. So feedback, what is feedback? 
Well, feedback is information about reactions to a product, a person's performance of task, which is used as a basis for improvement. The modific- uh, definition number two is the modification or control of process or systems by its results or effects in a biochemical pathway or behavioral response. Well, we're specifically talking about information that is coming back to us uh, to help us with our performance. I've got an article here from Lolly Daschle. She uh, has a leadership blog. And it's called The Power of Feedback, How to Make Feedback Constructive. She says here, criticism is rarely easy for anyone to hear, but the manner in which it is provided can make a huge difference in how feedback is received and how useful it can be in helping the recipient to grow. The way most organizations handle feedback is terrible. Bosses save up everything until the dreaded performance review rolls around, piling up a year's worth of feedback in one day is grueling and stressful for everyone involved. Instead of being an opportunity for growth, it's treated as something awful to get through. And how many times have you thought that you did not like your performance reviews or perhaps if you're giving them, dreaded them? I believe there is a problem, Dashiell says, not only with the whole performance review process, but with how we communicate feedback. We have institutionalized the art of letting people know how they are doing, often with a process that does more harm than good. But we dutifully follow the system that's handed to us, even though it's unsettling for everyone involved. She says feedback can be invaluable when it's offered in the right way, with the right intentions. Knowing how and when is a skill. And like any other skill, it takes lots of practice to get it right. Dashiell goes on to talk about some of the process that she uses, and this is one of the many processes we'll cover, but she says, make sure there's a reason for the feedback. It has to be given at the right time and at the right duration. It has to be done routinely and regularly. Keep it simple and specific. Make it interactive. Use I statements. Know when to go private and stay focused. So those are some tips from uh, Lolly Dashiell with regard to giving feedback. And she does go on to give two additional tips. Uh, For every negative, give two positives and follow up for progress. No one wants to receive feedback and then not hear anything later. According to Kevin Eikenberry, there are four different types of feedback. Number one is negative feedback or corrective comments about past behavior. These are things that didn't go well. There's positive feedback or affirming comments about past behavior. And these are things that went well and need to be repeated. There's also negative feedback or corrective comments about future behavior. These are things that don't need to be repeated next time. And then there's finally positive feedback or affirming comments about future behavior. These are things that would improve performance in the future. He goes on to say that there really are, it really comes down to balancing these strategies. You need to make sure that you use all of them. Ask the person for his or her opinion first. Tie it all together. More and less but. So when you bring these ideas together, do it with and, not but. And then finally, focus on the future. So as you can see, there's a couple of different articles that we've gone through here. And as you can see, there, there's uh, feedback is a nuance. There are different views. There are different strategies, different tips and tricks that uh, various people use uh, to, you know, to an- analyze feedback. And I think that you know, one of the things that I'm starting to to think a lot about with respect to feedback is it really comes down to communication skills and being able to properly communicate with one another. And communication is not only in the verbal communication sense, but also from a written communication perspective. So, you know, it just emphasizes to me how very important communication is and why We really need to practice our communication skills. And by 
getting some of these uh, feedback skills tuned, it's going to improve your overall communication skills. So definitely something that uh, you should be thinking about as we go through this. I think it's also important as we go through this show to really think about past examples when you were being given feedback or perhaps you were giving feedback. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the psychology behind workplace feedback. We'll be right back. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com and for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Hello and welcome back, everyone. You're listening to My Strategy uh, we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio, and I am your host, John, John M. Hawkins. Today, we're talking about the art of providing feedback. Right before the break, we were talking about feedback, the various types of feedback, and the power of constructive feedback in the segment. I want to dive into the psychology behind workplace feedback. I think it's really interesting, you know, as you start to realize and dive into any sort of topic. It's important to understand the the psychology behind it. So I'm going to be leaning on an article that was written by John Windust. And the article is The Psychology Behind Better Workplace Feedback. What he's done here is he's put together 15 different facts. And these some of these facts are are pretty interesting. I mentioned one of them at the top of the show around 60 that 65 percent of employees want more feedback. So I'm going to go through these. They're kind of fun. Now, the first one is there is no such thing, no such thing as valuable feedback from someone you do not trust. I hadn't really thought about this before, but if you think about it, if you do not trust the person who is giving you the feedback, you're never going to get any value out of that. And why? And this is why it's so important to establish trust, which you know stems from good communication. Number two is struggling employees already realize that they have a problem. Number three, the more you listen, the better employees think you are at giving feedback. And this is something that I think just really is part of everyday life. Unless you're giving a speech or a, a doing a monologue, it's always important to listen in every in any situation that you're in. As you can see by the research here, it does show that it it, uh, it does help. Uh, many people typically um, want to have a two-way conversation as opposed to a one-way conversation. Uh, data shows it is better to sh- have spend more time listening 
which will have a stronger payoff in the end. Number four is most employees prefer corrective feedback to praise and recognition. A majority of employees prefer corrective feedback to praise and recognition. In a survey of 900 global employees, 57% stated they would prefer corrective, which is negative slash constructive type of feedback. And only 43% stated they would prefer praise or recognition. Honesty, huh? The more confident you are, the more likely it is that you prefer negative feedback. It says here that people who are more confident do prefer corrective feedback. They see this as a way that they can improve their game. Number six, almost everybody loves receiving feedback, but they hate giving it. Turns out that most people like getting feedback a lot more than they like giving it. When's the last time you gave someone constructive feedback? Think about it. Older workers want more feedback than younger generations. The older workers have a preference for both more positive and negative feedback than younger generations. There's a chart here that shows how they see it and how and what their preference is. So there's a lot of good data and a lot of good charts and information in this uh, specific uh, article. It says your star performers need extra affirmation after setbacks. Recent research from a London business school showed that star performance need more positive affirmation after setbacks. The researchers looked at the performance of top talent after they had a major setback involving loss of status. The findings show that when previously high performers lose status, their performance suffers and the very best suffers the most. While mediocre performers do not experience such setbacks. Positive feedback should praise effort, effort, not the ability. How many times we've been told it's, you know, 90% will and 10% talent. So praise the efforts, not the ability. 10 is strong team engagement is built on a culture of honest feedback. I think that honest feedback also can help build trust. If you're in a team environment, rarely communicating or communicating via email and emails are not worded appropriately and potentially could lead to hurt feelings, you can end up going through the year, you know, not building that culture of trust. And if you don't have that culture of trust, it makes it very difficult to give honest feedback. Number 11 is improving performance requires both specific goals and specific feedback. Most of us know from our own work experience that specific feedback is significantly more helpful in improving long-term performance. But it turns out that specific feedback isn't helpful unless you have specific goals as a frame of reference. So now we're tying in setting of the goals, having those goals in place. And if you have feedback that uh, can help you adjust your goals, it is more effective than random feedback. To improve effort, focus on relative feedback. This fascinatingly, the most motivating kind of feedback is finding out you're just a little bit behind someone else. It's most motivating knowing that you have a chance to win but aren't currently doing so. 13 is following up on feedback is critical for improving behavior. Withholding negative feedback, this is an interesting one, withholding negative feedback is really about protecting yourself, yourself not the recipient. And number 15 is the more you ask for feedback, the more effective you are as a leader. Leaders who ask for feedback are significantly more effective This was done after a study of 51,800 managers. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to deliver good and also give you some examples of bad feedback. We'll be right back. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, 
Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This is my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Today, we're talking about the art of providing feedback. Right before the break, we were talking about the psychology behind better workplace feedback. We went through about 15 different statistics uh, that are all related to giving feedback. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about Learning to deliver good feedback and also being able to recognize when it's bad feedback. We're going to talk a little bit about the purpose, effective feedback, job feedback, and behavioral feedback. I'm going to be leaning on an article here written by Dan McCarthy. Uh, Dan McCarthy wrote this article uh, titled, Learning to Deliver Feedback Effectively. It says here, Ken Blanchard, an author and management expert, once said, feedback is the breakfast of champions. That's all well and good, but what exactly is feedback and what is the best way to give it for the best results? So here Dan gives us some examples of feedback. So first and foremost, he talks about the purpose of feedback. The purpose of feedback is to reinforce positive behaviors that contribute to performance or that eliminate negative behaviors that can detract from performance. So it's really a way for us to take information in, you know, adjust our behavior or activities so that we can do better. Same thing with goal setting, right? We always are looking for feedback. He says here, good employees need and want to know how they're doing. And effective managers work hard to master the art and process of conducting difficult conversations and offering meaningful praise. Well, just in going through the first few sections of the segments of the show, you can see that there really is a lot involved in giving feedback. And I do agree that this is an art. It is something that takes practice. And if you want to be somebody who is able to give feedback, effective feedback, you have to practice it. It also means that if you are somebody who receives feedback, you have to build trust relationships. You have to be open to being able to get that feedback. He says here that giving feedback is one of the most important parts of a manager's job. We all have our blind spots. And a manager who focused on employee development can often open an employee's eyes to those blind spots. He can coach employees on how to improve. It says here, effective feedback, effective feedback, effective positive feedback should be specific. He says, get to the point. Don't drag other semi-related or similar incidents into the conversation. Focus on one event per conversation. 
I think this is important, you know, the timeliness of it. You know, do you want to sit there for an hour hearing about how you're doing a terrible job or at the time you do something that's not appropriate, would you rather have a two-minute conversation and then move on? We're going to talk about that two-minute conversation in a um, another segment, but I think that's what that's really about. You know, get to the point, be specific, sincere. If you have a personality conflict with the individual, consider enlisting the help of another supervisor to pass on feedback rather than come off like you're giving praise grudgingly or worse that you're being overly harsh about a mistake. It goes back to the trust. Remember, you, you cannot get feedback that you're going to act on from someone you don't trust. So there's a tactic for you managers. If you do not have a relationship with a specific employee, which is very possible given that not all chemistries mesh, find someone else who can give that feedback, another peer. Timely, address issues as they come up, not after negative habits become entrenched. And I think that speaks to what Lolly Daschle was writing about in our first segment, where you know you build up all this information over the course of a year, and then in one specific in one specific day, in an hour, an hour and a half, or however long it is, you have to dump all of that information onto the employee. You know, it's not fair, not only for the manager, but it's not fair for the employee either. Meaningful or behavioral. The feedback should directly address the job or how the individual is handling the job. Should be something that the person can change. If change is a difficult challenge or suggestions or assistance at the very least, get the employee to take the first step in the right direction. I've got some examples here. Here's an example of job performance feedback. Positive example. Bill, you exceeded your production goal by 20% last week. Great job. That's really going to help us meet our overall plant production and financial goals. How did you do it? A poor example would be, Bill, I noticed you exceeded your production goal last month. This month's goal will be increased by 20%. Another poor example, Bill, I noticed you exceeded your production goal last month. I hope this doesn't mean you're going to ask for a raise. You know, I think this is an, I'm going to stop here because I think it's interesting. How many times do you talk to leaders who use humor in the day-to-day -day workplace? But when you're giving a backhanded compliment like that, it really is feedback. So that's why I think it's so important to really use your humor right. If you are in the situation where you're providing feedback, Stick to the point of feedback. If you're in a fun situation, then use the humor. But as you can see, if you're somebody who's jovial and likes to have fun, and then at that point you're giving feedback, it can conflate the message. And as a result, the employee doesn't know what to do. The, now here it says the first example shows an interest in Bill's skills, whereas Bill never received any semblance of a reward for his exemplary production. In the second or third responses, in fact, these two responses probably convinced him that he shouldn't bother to work hard again. Another example here is Nancy. Um, positive. Nancy, I noticed at the meeting this morning that you got defensive when your data was challenged during your presentation. When Amy asked a question about your calculations, you were short with her and told her that she needs to trust you and you know how to do your job. When you responded to her that way, she shut down for the rest of the meeting. You really need her support. I'm wondering if you'll have it now. What are your thoughts? So as you can see there, she's giving feedback, but she's also giving specific facts, and she's asking for the thoughts of Nancy. So there's a lot of different uh, – there's lots of information out there uh, with regard to how to go about giving feedback and also in going through some of these giving feedback – you can learn a little bit uh, on your own on how to receive that feedback. And by being able to know good feedback versus bad feedback, it also gives you the ability, if you're in a situation where you're receiving feedback, to provide some coaching to the person giving you the feedback. Because the last thing you want to do is if you have a manager or somebody who you're working with who isn't good at giving feedback, that can be very frustrating. And it can put you in a position where you feel like your goals are now in jeopardy. What you're trying to do isn't working. 
it could destroy the trust relationship and it just goes into a never ending cycle. So from that perspective, it's not only about learning how to give good feedback, but if you're somebody who receives feedback, learn so that you can coach those who are giving it. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about constructive feedback. We'll be right back. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to my strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us uh, if you're just joining us. Uh, we are talking today about the art of providing feedback. We're talking about giving and receiving feedback, the various types of feedback, when to give feedback, and other tips and tricks to receive constructive feedback. Now, I would love to get your feedback and thoughts. So if you send an email with your thoughts to talk at johnmhawkins.com, that's talk at johnmhawkins.com and send me your feedback. It could be positive, negative, or just to say hi. You can uh, be entered to win our weekly giveaway, which is a copy of my latest book, Coach to Greatness. And you'll also receive a $25 Visa gift card. So that is available to you if you uh, send in some feedback. Right before the break, we were talking about how to deliver good and bad feedback. And we went through a couple of examples of this, of that. I want to talk a little bit about constructive feedback. Um, You know, what does it take to provide constructive feedback? And I'll be leaning on an article here that was written by Jamie Kugler. And this is uh, from a, a blog called The... Q Work Future, where awesome workplaces grow. Uh, Jamie says, giving employee feedback is a constructive, in a constructive way, takes practice, which we'd established earlier. This is according to Stanford GSB lecturer, Carol Robin. And almost most can agree on the importance of constructive feedback. Few are practicing it regularly. So in this uh, article, she talks about some tips for giving and receiving employees feedback and also goes through some additional examples. You know, I think it's important for us to, as we do our own research on feedback, is to, you know, source many different articles, source many different 
uh, viewpoints because in doing that, that really is how you're going to develop your strategy for providing and receiving feedback. She says here, number one, be vulnerable. Receiving feedback often puts an employee in a vulnerable position. Using a bit of humility creates a relationship where the receiver can hear feedback better and they're not the only ones being vulnerable in the exchange. Her example here is a good one would be, I remember having a conversation with my manager just like this a few years ago, and it really helped me become a better writer. The bad example would be, your writing is far from where it should be. What are you doing to improve? As you can see, a couple of differences right here. She is empathizing by giving a story about feedback that she'd received in the past because your manager was in the same position you were at some point where they needed to get feedback. Lead with intent. She says, use phrases such as the reason I'm telling you this or... I hope I'm I am hoping the result of this conversation will be preface your employee feedback with phrases like these to show where you're coming from and explain why you're giving this feedback in the first place. For example, a good way to do this would be to say the reason your performance rating was lower than normal is because I know you're capable of producing much more than you have been lately. Bad example would be your productivity is lacking. She says we should also focus on the behavior and really discuss how the employee's behavior impacts you and or the organization. Uh, I'm going to add in here also goals, right? If somebody's really aligned to a specific goal that they want to, you can uh, show how that performance or that behavior is derailing them. A good one would be constantly submitting late work makes me think you don't understand our team's goals. Bad would be, you're the only one who's ever behind on projects. She also says, maybe we should have a conversation. Make sure the conversation goes both ways as opposed to a one-way dump. Find feedback software that makes it easy to have a continuous 360-degree conversation, says Jamie. Good. When you don't respond to my emails for a few days, it makes me feel like you're not committed to our projects. Can you tell me a little bit about your view on timely responses? Bad would be, your slow response time to my emails is frustrating. She also says we should check our language. Avoid using matter of fracts phases, such as you are too sensitive. You're not good at taking constructive feedback. Instead, use I language to share your opinions but keep in mind that saying things like, I feel like you're too sensitive, is cheating. An example here would be, I find it difficult to give you feedback. I worry you're taking it negatively. The bad way to give it would be, you make it difficult to give you constructive feedback. You know, when you're giving feedback to someone, you're going to be, both are going to be put in a defensive situation, perhaps. I mean, number one, the person you're giving to the feed the feedback to, you know, is going to be put in a, you know, in a compromising situation where they're vulnerable. And you really need to think about what is the language you are using with that person? Do you have a trust relationship? Make sure that the timing is appropriate. And I think that's all it comes down to, you know, when is a good time for us to give feedback? And when is something that is takes time and you'll need to learn. But it says here that uh, offering feedback can be most useful in following instances. When good work, successful projects, and resource behavior deserves to be recognized. When you're in a position of improving a person's skill is high. When the person is already expecting feedback, either because a feedback session was scheduled in advance or because they know that you've observed this behavior. So really start thinking about when to give feedback. Not every time is an appropriate time. In some cases, it needs to be done in private. And we're going to talk a little bit about that when we go through our strategy for giving feedback. And it's basically uh, a way to give feedback in two minutes or less. I think it's important, too, you know, as you start to think about feedback and, you know, the chemistry you have with the person, the trust 
the better communicator you are, the better relationship, professional relationship, I should say, you have with the person or if it's an interpersonal relationship, the better relationship you have with the person, the more open, the more honest, the more likely they are going to be able to receive feedback from you. This is my strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. When we come back, we're going to talk about the feedback formula, how to give feedback in two minutes or less. We'll be right back. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to my strategy. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, we'd love to get your feedback. Send us an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com, and you can enter to win a copy of my latest book and also a $25 Visa gift card. Right before the break, we were talking about constructive feedback and gave some examples on how we need to be you know, vulnerable, how we need to lead with intent, focus on the behavior. Well, on this segment, I want to talk a little bit about you know, our strategy or our framework for learning about and giving feedback. So it in- re- requires that we have a systematic approach where we need to be aware that there is some sort of a need for enhancing our um, ability to either give or receive feedback. So once we've identified that, we want to assess and analyze. You know, when we start to assess the situation, doing some analysis, you can find out the different steps that you can take. What is working? What isn't working? Perhaps record yourself giving feedback, practice feedback to someone, and then listening back to it so you can hear it from a different perspective. We also talked a little bit about how you know it might make sense to have a peer deliver feedback if you do not have a good rapport with a specific employee, or if you are, you know, intimately related with that employee in a family business situation, or if, you know, there's some other relationship that you have with them outside of the business, they might see you as a friend, a buddy, and it's going to be very difficult if you're a supervisor or manager to give them direct feedback. So really think about why things are not working. And by coming up and assessing and analyzing, it gives us the ability then to strategize and plan. You know, strategy really is the course of actions that you've identified. And planning is just saying that you're going to do those actions. And when are you going to be doing those actions? So really, when it comes down to strategize and planning, I thought it would make the most sense uh, to talk a little bit about a feedback formula that uh, you can give in two minutes or less Um, This uh, feedback formula is something uh, that I found uh, from Candid Culture, and it basically gives us ways that we can do feedback in two minutes or less. Uh, The article was written by Sherry Harley. She also has an accompanying video video out there where she talks about giving feedback to uh, people who smell, uh, you know, and uh, people who, you know, have other types of of, – actions that she doesn't approve of, but she does it in kind of a fun way so that you get the point. And, um, you know, it also gives you the ability to have this formula. So she says, number one, introduce the conversation so feedback recipient knows what to expect. Number two, empathize so both feedback provider and the recipient feel as comfortable as possible. Number three, 
describe the observed behavior so the recipient can picture a specific recent example of what you are referring to. The more specific you are, the less defensive he or she will be and the more likely they'll be able to hear you take the corrective action. So that's also, you know, timely. You have to come with a specific example, not generalities. Sharing the impact or results. Describe the consequence of its behavior. It's what happened as a result of the other person's actions. Having a dialogue gives both people a chance to speak and ensures that the conversation is not one-sided. Many feedback conversations are not conversations at all. They're monologues. One person talks while the other person pretends to listen while you're thinking, what an idiot you are. Good feedback conversations are dialogues during where the recipient can ask questions, sharing their point of view and explore next. Again, these are tips by Sherry Harley. Seven tips to give good feedback. It says make a suggestion or request so the recipient has a way to approach the situation or task in the future. Most feedback conversations tell the person what he or she did wrong and the impact of the behavior. Only rarely do they offer an alternative. And the seventh step that she says here is build an agreement on next steps ensures that there is a plan for what the person will be doing going forward. And she has some examples here. So we want to introduce the conversation in step one. John, I need to talk to you. Step two, we need to empathize. This is a little bit awkward and it may be uncomfortable, but I want you to know that while I wish I did not have to tell you this, I did this because I care about you and want you to be successful. Step three, describe the observed behavior. John, I've noticed that you have an odor. Step four, share the impact or result. I know this is very awkward subject. We work in a small space. I don't want others to avoid working with you or say negative things about you. And as awkward as this, I would rather you hear this from me than someone else. Sometimes health conditions can cause certain odors, as can eating certain foods. Step five, have some dialogue. What are your thoughts? She then says, give John some time to say whatever he wishes to say. Step six is make a suggestion or request for what to do next time. Again, I'm really sorry to have to tell you this. Please make sure you shower every day before coming to work and wash your clothes regularly. And please tell me if there's something else you'd like me to know. Now, she says here, because of the awkwardness of the subject, skip six, seven and go right over to the next one. Thank you for being willing to have this conversation with me. You can say more than you think you can. You might be grasping, thinking there is no way you would ever tell someone they smell. It's definitely an awkward conversation, one I would hope you would never have. She used to say that, or she used one of the most difficult things you'll ever have to say to demonstrate that the most awkward feedback can be delivered empathetically and quickly. And I think that's her point here with this, is this is an awkward moment but if we can learn how to give feedback in an awkward moment with something that's uncomfortable to talk about, for example, John has an odor, then it's going to give us the practice we need so that when we have other conversations, we can um, you know, use the same formula to give the feedback. I also think it's important to think about you know, the timeliness of it, give the, give the feedback in private. Um, also, you know, make sure that you keep it short and to the point, come out, say it and be done. You know, nobody wants to have, John's not going to want to have a hour long conversation about why he smells and his diet and, you know, all the other things. So if you can master being able to have a quick two minute conversation with somebody, follow that formula where you go through the seven steps to provide feedback, it's going to give you a good strategy uh, going forward to be able to provide feedback. And then you have to implement your plan. So once you've got that plan in place, implement it, test it. How is that feedback strategy working? Are people responding in a positive way? Are they responding in a negative way? You can then also see coaching and find ways to come up with scripts or tactics so that you have a good way of consistently delivering 
these messages if you are giving the feedback. And if you're receiving the feedback, I think it's also helpful to be able to know what that person giving the feedback should say so that you can help them provide better feedback. Because in some cases, those people who, those managers who come off with feedback that is, you know, not appropriate or it's it's not in this framework, it can be very off-putting. It destroys the trust. And by you having a constructive feedback of constructive feedback to that person, you could actually increase uh, the communication, the relationship, which is going to make communication all that much more easy for the two of you and perhaps even help both of you start to realize more and more goals. So I think that was just pretty interesting. Um, Read her videos out there. It's pretty funny when she goes through how to go about providing feedback. Um, She does give the odor example. Uh, online, and uh, I think it, it's good humor, but it also sets the um, framework that you can use going forward. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to get your plan put in place. We'll be right back. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress, plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Hello and welcome back, everyone. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we've been talking about the art of providing feedback. We're talking about giving and receiving feedback, different types of feedback, when to give feedback, and other tips to give constructive feedback. In case you've missed this broadcast, you can listen to it on many platforms online, including iHeartRadio and also Apple iTunes. And then if you'd like to have something covered in the show, please send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com or you can give us a call at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY, 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. Well, today we've been talking about feedback. We've been talking about one of those very difficult discussions that we have with our bosses, with people that we have relationships with on a daily basis. And we went through the, the definition of feedback, talked about the four different types of feedback, and also went through the power of constructive feedback. And I think that, you know, as as I've gone through that segment, I've begun to realize that, you know, the real importance of providing timely feedback. You know, it's not just having a once a year performance review, but it's getting to a point where you're getting feedback constantly, you know, with the constant improvement model. So if you're in a situation where, you know, your boss gives you feedback once a year, it might behoove you or be in your best interest to ask for more regular feedback. And while your your company might have feedback once a year, if you start asking for it on a regular basis, it's going to help you and your relationship with your boss. We also talked a little bit about the psychology behind workplace feedback and gave some very interesting statistics. One of them was interesting to me was that 65% of employees want feedback. Many employees who know that they have a problem realize they have a problem, which means that it's very important for us to learn how to deliver good and bad feedback, you know, really understanding what is the purpose of the feedback, uh, what is effective feedback, what is job feedback, what is behavioral feedback, You know, what are those things that we need to be thinking about? What are the actions 
and what would a good feedback response be? Also, think about constructive feedback. When you're delivering feedback, be vulnerable. Lead with an intent. Focus on the behavior. Know when to give good feedback, when to give good, bad feedback. I would go through and review those examples because somebody who is a good communicator didn't become a good communicator overnight. They had to practice. It's the exact same thing when you are giving feedback and also receiving feedback. Now, the more you listen to these examples or, you know, if you're online listening to what I spoke about earlier or if you're, you know, reading a blog article on feedback, really focus on the word choice that is being used because words have meaning. And especially when you're in a situation where somebody is very vulnerable because they are the recipient of feedback, it's very important to choose those words very carefully. And it also you know, from my perspective, gets me to think that we have to have trust in our relationships. Because one of the statistics was that if you do not have trust with someone and you receive feedback, you will never apply that feedback because you do not have the trust with that person. And so as you think about your interactions with people, those you are providing feedback to, those you are receiving feedback from, develop that trust. And developing the trust means that we listen more. It means that we take the time to, if we have feedback, to provide it in private. You've been listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. We'll see you next time. This has been My Strategy with your host, John M. Hawkins. Listen each week as John reminds us that just like elite athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of their coaches, he is here to help you achieve your highest goals possible. Here each week on My Strategy. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.